First John 5 and 18. Yeah, that was great symbolite action. Stinking call drop. You know what I'm saying? Woo woo! Somebody talking about that dead wrong. Now I don't mess with no poop. I'm a grown man. Don't mess with no poop. that too fast. Y'all right over there, Leo, out there punch drunk? I just thank the Lord. We got a lot of stuff to try to talk about tonight. Let's see if we can get it in. See if we can make something happen. All right, y'all. 1 John 5 and 18. 1 John 5 and 18. You know, if we're going to look at something, Lord willing, that we've been Desiring to get to. But first thing we're going to look at. You know it's a lot of people been getting murdered in this city. Uh, but that's not really nothing new for Jacksonville, Florida. People getting murdered. Hello, hello. It came out twice. I might well see who it is. I ain't got started too much yet. Oh. Oh, all right. Well, who else that was? That's somebody else got knocked off too. I heard that. Well, 1 John 5 and 18, we know that whosoever is born of God sin not, but he that is begotten of God keep himself and that wicked one touch him not. We know that we are of God and the whole world lie in wickedness. Y'all sit back and y'all be wondering why the police kill people dead and why brothers get shot dead in the street. Matthew chapter 24, the whole world lie in wickedness. I don't know how you niggas actually will sit back and think. And when I'm talking, I'm talking about our people as a whole. That you can commit all manner of sin and all manner of ungodliness can go about and God is going to protect you. Matthew 24 and 9. Does that make any sense to any of y'all? Why you think, you think, you think the Lord would allow the police to shoot down a saint dead in the street? See, it's unfortunate when brothers get killed. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, these men are not dying for righteousness sake. Them two young women that got murdered out there in PYC last night, they didn't get killed for righteousness sake. That young man that got killed at McDonald's, he didn't get killed for righteousness sake. The brother that got shot in front of his, uh, his uh, baby mama and his daughter, he didn't get killed for righteousness sake when he got gunned down at that gas station. And that's just the only ones that I, that's come to mind because there was a lot of other murders going on than, just, than that. And this ain't no talking about, I'm talking about that these are murders that done happened in the last 30 days. And it's a few more than that. Because I don't watch the news every day. But this one here just one because people post about it. 24 9. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. So don't y'all know, how you gonna sit back and y'all talking about black people need to love each other but you don't love God? So you think God gonna let you love each other? You can't be that stupid. Did you hear what he just said, though? That they will betray one another. Many will be offended. Come on around here to Deuteronomy 28. You can't be that stupid. You ain't obeying God's laws, but you think he gonna cause you to obey man's laws. You really that dumb? So you think the Lord really operate like that? The whole earth done went crazy because don't nobody obey God's word. That's the problem. That is the problem. Y'all don't realize that's the problem. Deuteronomy 28. Let me see where I want help. About verse 50. This is what he said. Verse 54, pardon me. He says, so that the man. We'll make it 53. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thy own body. The flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which Yah thy God hath given thee in the siege and in the straightness, wherewith thy enemies shall distress thee. 
so that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil towards his brother and towards the wife of his bosom and towards the remnant of his children which he shall lead, so that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat, because he hath nothing left him in the seeds and in the straightness wherewith enemies shall distress thee in all thy gates. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eyes shall be evil towards the husband of her bosom, and towards her son, and towards her daughter, towards her young one that come out from between her feet, towards her children which she shall bear, for she shall eat them for one of all things secretly in the siege and straightness, wherewith thy enemy shall distress thee in thy gates. Do y'all know what that man just told y'all what was going to happen with the people? He just told you you would betray one another, right? That sounds like a people that would be betraying one another. Then you're sitting back talking about a woman that wouldn't even care nothing about her children. She would be selfish and only care about herself. She don't care nothing about them kids as long as I get me me. And then it sat back and said that that man would be the same way. So you have a people's mind because they're disobedient to the word the way they only care about each other. So since that iniquity is abounding, that sin is manifesting, then there ain't going to be no love. Hmm. See Mark chapter 12, verse 28. See, black people, where's the love? We need to love each other. You can't love nobody till you love God. Mark 12 and 28. And one of the scribes came, having heard them reason together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? Yahshua answered him, the first of all commandments is, Hear, O Yisrael, Yah our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love Yah thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. See, that's what some of y'all problem is. Y'all don't love Yah with all your heart, and all your soul, and all your strength, and all your mind, and all your might. You actually love God when it's convenient for you or when you actually are concerned with trying to impress somebody. You know, I'm going to tell y'all, I'm going to ask y'all a question. I'm going to see how, where your intelligence at. Do you think it means anything to impress people that don't have a spirit just like you don't? Do you know they going to hell right along with you? But some of y'all are worried about impressing people who did. Why would you be worried about impressing somebody who don't have life in them? That make any sense to anybody. But that's what a lot of y'all problem is though. The man been steady hitting on this and focusing on this for y'all to get this through your mind. You need to stop putting up an image and a facade of righteousness and just be righteous. All the flogging and hypocrite, I'm telling you the man see it and he troubled my heart with it. Why you think he keep having me talk to y'all about it? Because y'all cause not doing it? Do y'all not know it be certain things he had me mentioning because one of y'all doing it? It could be something that I could bring up that ain't got nothing to do with what I was talking about. Is because the Lord wanted that individual or individuals to know, I know what you're doing. And I'm just letting you know that I know what you're doing. Y'all don't know that door. They don't be realizing that door. How many of y'all be realizing that this man do this? Or y'all be thinking somebody just told it to me? But guess what? Somebody did tell it to me. The Lord told it to me. That's why he put it in my mouth to say it. I ain't have to have nobody my uh, name in my head when it came up. Like I tell y'all Wednesday night, it was three people mine. One person my name in particular. He kept banging in my head. And I wanted to scream it. But he said, hold your peace though. And you know why he kept putting your names in my head and kept banging it in? Because he said, I'd already let them know. I know what they're doing. I done told them. I done showed them. He said, but that nigga ain't going to listen, though. We just went over that Wednesday. He said, now, nah, if the man of God done told you not to do something, and you're going to do it anyway, he said, be strong and do it. So you can fall. Because it's God's intent to destroy you. See, when you told not to do something, and then it's in your mind that you're going to do it anyway, Please go do it, because I, then I will know it is the Lord's intent to destroy you. Y'all don't be realizing that, that, that I know that door. If he tell me to tell you something, and you be like, I'm going to do it anyway. You know what I'm talking about? 
I know right then, God gonna kill you. Go ahead and do your thing, buddy. Y'all don't know nothing about this song because that's Yuck Mouth. Any of y'all used to listen to Yuck Mouth? I know Delta Mighty. No, you know this song. You don't, you don't know who Yuck Mouth is. Nigga, Yuck Mouth from the Loonies, nigga. Yeah, we know you listen to Okay. Him. No, I'm looking at Yuck Mouth. Well, he had a song called Do Your Thug Thing. That's what we're going to tell you. Do your thug thing, homeboy. You do your thug thing. You crash and burn. That's 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Verse 31. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That speakerphone got to go. There is none other commandment greater than these. Mm. Romans chapter 12. Now what y'all don't sit back and look at. That man said you got to love God first. Then you can love your brother. You can't love your brother then love God. That's how niggas think. Let me love my brother first. Then I can love God. Nigga, it don't work that way. You know, make, make, make that Romans 13 part of me. Romans 13 by verse 8. That's what y'all niggas think it's all about. I can love I can love my brother first, then I can love God. Niggas say the willpower of self. I mean, that's, that's straight nigga though. I got willpower to stop killing. But you ain't got no willpower to stop sinning. You gonna uh, ask to, to stop doing evil stuff? You intrinsically evil. We'll look at that too, I suppose. Romans 13 and 8. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that love one another hath fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. If there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love work no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. So you guess what that means? When you actually love God and do what God took, because everything he just told you is everything the Lord told you not to do. See, this is how you end up working ill to your neighbor. Don't you know if you've been done committed adultery, slept with a man, why? That might cause him to be angry to come see you. Don't you know if you've been done stole from somebody or told a lie of somebody or been done coveted somebody that a whole, covet something that belonged to somebody, a whole bunch of uh, ugly stuff can come up from that. Y'all don't be realizing that. Y'all don't be realizing that. Y'all don't be realizing that. All the key thing when he told you loving will fulfill another law. Because if you love God, then you wouldn't do anything to anybody else because you know it would displease God. I'm going to ask y'all a question. How many of y'all know somebody that died that you thought they was a good person? I'm talking about not according to God's word, but how many people y'all died and you thought they was a good person? You know what I'm saying? And how many, and how many of them people that died you thought was going to get in God's kingdom when they died? You know what I'm saying? I can't sit back because I ain't never really given much to hope. I'm going to be honest. When my grandma died, granddaddy died, auntie died, I ain't really given much to hope. I'm not sure they did now. Because I didn't, I didn't mess with that book. For the exact reason what I was talk, telling y'all about earlier. That white man was attached to it. Everything that those white folks taught, I rejected it. So I didn't really fool with it. So I didn't really give much thought. You know what I'm saying? I'm just being honest. I didn't give it much thought. Like, well, auntie in heaven then. You know, I didn't think that way. It was like, she dead now. Gotta suck it up. Shoot, I ain't gonna see her no more. That's what bothered me more than anything. I ain't gonna see her no more. When you sit back and look at it. How many of y'all would be hurt if I told you your grandma going to hell and could show it to you? Or your homeboy? Because I know it's a couple people know, uh, I know, you know what I'm saying? That's how we're supposed to look at it. I know uh, T and Mouse, somebody real close to them just got killed. They know the word. They know he going to hell. But somebody who was close to him didn't understand the note. How could they not go to hell? He was such a good dude. A good dude according to who? According to you? Or according to me? See, we don't never look at what's good according to God. See, look at John chapter 8. See, we don't never look at what's good according to God. We always look at what's good according to our perception. See, John 8 and 54. Then we got to sit back and look at it. What happens if you like that breath? Lizzie. Eight fifty four. 
Yahshua answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honor me, of whom you say that he is your God. And you know what ends up happening? You know in the book of Proverbs it says many men proclaim their own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. You know it's many dudes be quick to scream they're a good nigga, ain't I'm a good woman. I'm a good man. I ain't talking about this for being in a relationship with nobody, but saying they good. You know what I'm talking about? But saying they good. Ah, oh, something they'll come to mind. I guess we'll look at it. But in actuality, you not good. You proclaiming your own goodness. But what did we just read on Wednesday? It's committed for a steward to be what? What is a faithful? Faithful. Yahshua is called the faithful and true witness. So what are these people faithful to? These people were faithful to their own desires, their own lust, their own way. Hold on. Before we read, let me finish this out. Let me read this, finish this out. Ye, yet you have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you, but I know him and I keep his saying. Now let's turn around and let's look at something now. Let's look at Psalms 53 and 1. Well, 14 and 1. We're going to go to Psalms 14 and 1. Matthew chapter 19. And then Acts chapter 10. About verse 35. Psalm 14 and 1. He said, The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that do good. Y'all looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that do good. No, not one. So he said, ain't nobody that do good now. Let's see what it says. Y'all know what we're finna go to. Matthew 19 and 15. Make it 16. And like this here, man, Lord willing, for those of y'all who able to get one through, y'all pray for all the brother Quab. I just seen he say he in the ER. Lord will he be all right. And 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why call thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wert enter into life, keep the commandment. So in order for you to be good, then you know that you know what that would have to mean. Because he said, Ain't nobody good but God. So what's going to happen in order for you to become good? That means you're going to have to be born as God. You're going to have to be born of God. That's the only way you're going to be good. So if this man said there's no man that's good and you're running around here talking about that's a good man, that means you were judging it according to this. Proverbs 16 and 25. This is how you were judging it then. This is how you were judging it then. And this also go for some of the stuff you niggas be doing. Proverbs 16, 25. There's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Mm -mm. We don't got to go to Acts chapter 10. You know, Peter said in Acts chapter 10 that Yahshua went about doing good. You know, he was called the good and the just one, right? So, so in the end, because he finished the work and was judged to be good or judged to be righteous, that means he was able to make us good. Right? So when you sit back and you look at it, because there's a lot of people going to say for that young woman uh, who got killed, but let's look at Leviticus 20 and 13, because she was a lesbian. If you see her photograph, it ain't no doubt about it. <laughs> Leviticus 20 and 13, after that, Romans chapter 1, just in case a nigga like this here, well, it don't say women, because i seen a nigga say it ain't, it ain't a sin for a woman to be a lesbian, because it don't say that. Common sense tell you woman ain't got no business putting her mouth on another woman vagina. Huh? Yeah, and it's nasty. 
And he said, if a man also shall lay with mankind as he lay with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall purely, surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. So get what? That's sin on you. Romans chapter 1, about verse 22. These people want God to go against his own word to assuage their grief. God's not going against his word to assuage your grief. God's not going against his word because you's a stubborn, rebellious bastard. Because you're not a son. Some of y'all are the biggest hypocrites this side of the Mississippi. Because we're on the other side. We ain't on the western side of the Mississippi. We're on the eastern side. Some of y'all are the biggest hypocrites I've ever seen in my life. It shows too. And your worst part is you don't even care. You, now some of y'all can spit out lies like grapeseed. You know what I'm talking about? I ain't talking about like when I be messing with my old lady when I be, and she be feeling embarrassed and she don't want to acknowledge something. Some of y'all lie about real stuff. You get cornered, you been caught. You niggas will shoot one right on out your mouth. Pop, pop. Some of you niggas, right after you hear the word, you'll go commit a sin like you ain't even heard nothing. This man has been done cut your whole heart into pieces and you walk away from that joyful. How can you be joyful when God just told you you walk in a pathway to hell? That make any sense to y'all when he just told you it might seem right to you, but you're going to go to hell behind that. You know how many people do stuff that seem right to them in the end, they're going to perish. You can't be that crazy. Romans 1 and 22. It ain't 22 I won't. It's 24. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts. You heard what he said? The lust of their own heart. Because there's a way that seemed right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. That's all these people been out here doing. They done sat back and told you, you can, as long as you... Feed a homeless person every now and then, and oh man, he'll do anything for anybody. Man, you can sit and talk to him. He a good brother. He gonna be in heaven. He looking down on me. You done turn the truth of God into a lie, cause he said the soul that sin it shall die. What so no, your homeboy is not getting in God's kingdom. Your auntie ain't getting there. Your cousin, your grandma, your daddy, your mammy, they left you a sinner. They going to hell. You don't like it. Take it up with the Lord. That's who you got a problem with. If I look you in your face and tell you, you did something, you ain't got no business. And you can't take that rebuke and you call yourself getting shy with me, you really mad with God and you ought to go to hell for it. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can look at me. I'm telling you now. The book says a prophet is not without honor. Save in his own house and in his own city and amongst his own kin. So when I keep telling y'all stuff, you don't like it. It don't matter if I tell you directly or if I'm preaching it and your faith be balled up and you got stuff in your mind you want to say out your mouth. Then know you're talking to the Lord. You're not talking to me. You're not mad with me. The book tell you that. He that therefore despised, despised not man but God because he given unto us his ruach cockle death. So just take that up with the Lord now. And I glad and tell me how it work out for you when you do it. He say, for this call, he say, who had changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up under vile affections. For even their woman did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one towards another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving themselves in themselves the recompense of their error. That was me. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Some of y'all wonder why you can't stop doing some certain stuff because you keep giving yourself over to it and you better be careful for God give you over to that reprobate mind and you be stuck like that. And that's only because you're going after your own lust. Listen to what the man say now. We ain't talking about, oh, your flesh well up and you learning to control certain thought patterns and processes that you had. But even though, even those after a while, you got to get them under control. Because, see, there'll come a time where you're fighting with something and then there come a time where you just know what you're doing and you don't care. You want to do what you want to do. 
You know what I'm talking about? That man said you better be careful because he'll give you the own recompense of your error that was me. So guess what? Unfortunately for that young man, he got into it with somebody. He put his hands on the dude, beat him up pretty good. Nigga got mad. Nigga paid somebody to kill him. But see, you sit back and look at, and that's a messed up situation all the way around. Should have just took your whooping. You know what I'm talking about? Or you shouldn't have ran up on somebody who had them hands. You ran up on the wrong nigga. He put the bammers on you. You know what I'm talking about? Now you around here shame because nigga beat you senseless. Now you want to kill him. Yeah, it's a coward move. It's a whole type move. But at the same time, though, at the same time, he done committed sin by putting his hands on the man. And God only knows the sins he may have committed that day. Your check came due. See, y'all don't realize this. God used the wicked to kill the wicked. That man said the wicked are his sword. He used sinners to kill sinners. The problem with some of y'all mind frame is, is you comfortable with being a sinner. See, there's nothing wrong with somebody encouraging you to stay on the path of righteousness and this, that, that, and the other. But see, some of y'all use that stuff. Somebody, you got to take your speakerphone off. Y'all got to, you got to hear the echo. But see, some of y'all, y'all look at it this way. You don't actually want to be challenged to do better than what you do. See, somebody give you that encouragement or whatever the case may be, but that really don't implore you to change your mind frame. You just rest on your laurels. You know what I'm saying? See, when you get challenged and pushed, it's going to cause you to actually reassess your thought process, your values, your actions, everything that you do, the course and the way that you're going. That's why you say the furnace of affliction. You have to be put in a tight situation in order for you to be able to change. Nigga, I'm saying, this ain't, like I told you, I felt C.T. Fletcher. Hey, man, you want somebody to pat you on the back? boy, pal. I'm not the guy for that. I don't mind giving you encouragement at the same time. You got to tighten up. You can get encouragement, but you know what the thing is, though? If I got to tell you the same thing three, four times. I shouldn't have to tell grown people the same thing three, four times. Y'all supposed to be grown. You're supposed to be grown. Y'all quick to tell somebody y'all grown, but y'all don't act like it, like it when it comes down to the Lord business. Then you act like little children. You don't want to be grown then. There's no way in the world I should have to tell grown people the same things over and over and over and over and over again. There's no way in the world I should have to stay on top of grown people to do stuff that they already know they're supposed to do. There's no way I should have to do that. But going back to what I was mentioning, that young lady was a bull dagger. She was a carpet muncher. A straight lesbian. Don't you know it's only a matter of time? Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. Because I love to mention it. What is a nigga in traffic? Sneak on the toilet or something? You're fortunate. I'm to sound like nigga flushing the toilet. You know, I'm a professional pooper. I know a toilet flush when I hear it. Hey, come on with your own lingo. You talking about me taking your lingo? God, tell Hey, man, I just joined the club that you started. Uh, I get that, man. You know what I'm saying? Shoot. I appreciate that, Craig. You know what I'm saying? I'll allow it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shoot, boy. Boy, I've been dropping loads for a long time. I'm talking about established 1980. I don't allow it. Shoot, gotta drop one right now. So you take your black one at home. <laughs> I'll make sure I poop here. I already done took one. Please add the 8 to 11. This is what he said, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the hearts of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Cause then man don't execute judgment on you for what you be doing. You think you keep on doing it. But look what the next thing he said. Though a sinner do an evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged, Yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he fear not before God. 
James chapter 5, he said his days ain't but a shadow. Let me tell you what James said. He said, I know it ain't going to be good for him. Then we'll look at Revelation 20. You've got to know it's not good for you to be no sinner. Hey, 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 boy, don't play with me. I need to fight like that. Boy, that's for when I get done, boy. I need to fight like that. And that other one for work out there now. You got to play like you got to. James chapter 4, verse 13. I'm telling you, you got some, you got eat, four eat, nigga, you got a whole tub. Okay, that's why I have to work out, huh? Hey, better get a man where you get a man. Go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow, we will go into such city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain, whereas you know not what shall be on tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appear for a little time and then vanish away. Your life ain't but a shadow now. You ain't got but a little time. You ain't got time to be sitting around here playing. That's why you get challenged and pushed to get yourself together. Because these niggas around here with all that nonsense, and they sitting there and they have you comfortable and complacent while you like, he, 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 make me feel good. Tell me something good to hear. And you're going to go straight to hell because you were around here playing because you thought you had time. But the man say, though a sinner do evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged, meaning his length on the earth is long time, he's still going to hell. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you something. Man, the Lord don't care nothing about no, uh, he don't care nothing about no rappers. He don't care nothing about no actors. If they sin us, they're going to perish. Them people don't mean nothing to him. The people in this society who we value they are detestable before your God's eyesight. Some of them can say some real stuff. Hey, Dame Dad said some real stuff about that stuff about running your own business and, and being your own boss and leaving something to your kid. Don't change the fact Dame Dash don't get his soul right, he's going to hell. Hey, guess what? Lauren Hill got some real nice records on that unplugged album. I enjoy them greatly. Don't change the fact. If she don't change her life, she going to hell. You think the Lord cared? Because that was a nice song you made, Adam Lives in Theory. That was a real hard record. That old Jerusalem, boy, you sung that. You even sung some of my word in that song. Well, I guess I'm going to spare you no matter about all your sins because there were some nice songs you made. I really enjoyed I Get Out. No, she going to hell. You got to understand something. And we're going to look at it. If you don't have the breath of the Ruach HaKodesh, which is actually the breath of life, you will die. You don't have life in you. You are lifeless. I seen a brother talking about that earlier. They say somebody told him that everybody got the breath of life. I had a young woman tell me that. Everybody got the spirit. No, everybody don't got the spirit. Everybody don't have that. See, you look at people because they say something that might be true as if God with them or because somebody named and say God or Lord or drop a verse or two, you think God working with them. How stupid are you? Anybody can mention a Bible verse. James chapter 2 now. James chapter 2. Hold on. James chapter 2. James chapter 2, verse 17. He said, Even so faith, if it have not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believe that there is one God, thou do well. The devils also believe and tremble. Like here, he said, The demons, the evil spirits know there's a God. But guess what? Just because you quote a Bible verse don't mean you know there's a God. We cannot continue to be that stupid and ignorant to be duped by people because they mention a verse or two because you like these people. Nigga, I don't care nothing if I see Obama mention a Bible verse. Nigga, you still a sinner, nigga. Nigga mention a Bible verse, but he's smoking a cigarette in the next breath. Nigga mention a Bible verse, but he cussing. Nigga mention a Bible verse, but he a drunk. Nigga mention a Bible verse, but he a fornicator. And you be like, but the Lord working with him. Nigga, sit your stupid butt down somewhere. You sound like an idiot. You sound dumb. 
And you know why you want to believe that? Because you committing sin, so you want to convince yourself of that to make you feel better about what you do. That's why people do that. Ain't that right, Liz? Revelation 20 and 15. Ain't that right, Liz? Look how Liz turned around and looked like, yeah, that's, that's what's happening. She look at me. I got a shirt. Look at me. I got a shirt. Look at me. Look at me. Look at 20 and 15. Back, back up to by 12. See, that's what's going to happen now. And then we're going to come right back to James chapter 2. Y'all bear with me because we're going to get this Ezekiel 20. I got some time. You know, I was sitting back here. My old lady going to be mad because I seen her little notebook. That she write a note saying, because sometimes I just be wondering how many verses we might hit tonight. You know, I don't write them down, but I know she write them down. You know, before you know it, man, look up, boy, it'd be a lot of verses, boy. I seen one, I ain't even realized it was about 45 of them on there. You seen a little doodle she writing? Huh? You seen, you seen a little doodle she writing? No. Are you talking about uh, commentary? No. She actually, she actually doodles. I ain't seen no doodles, but I seen some commentary. Oh, yeah, she definitely doodles. Nicole Bonton. No. Hearts. No, that's real lame. Mrs. Dwayne Bonton. I'm going to leave that alone. I ain't going to put out there on that. Oh, I'm going to do it, Mark. He said he's going to do it, huh? 20 and 12, Revelation. And I saw the dead, small, and great stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. That's what you're going to be judged by. So what's the book you're going to be judged by? Hold what you got, Romans chapter 3. You got to know what you're going to be judged by. You're not going to be judged by what somebody deemed to make you a good person. How many of y'all right now be like somebody would say you a good person? How many of y'all say that? I'm talking about how many of y'all would say that? Somebody come to you right now and say that's a good dude. You know what I'm saying? Go to say, now that they know me. How many of y'all know you're going to hell, you die right now? So that means you ain't too good then. Not as good as you thought you might be. And that ain't to beat me. See, I'm going to tell you something. See, somebody say, that ain't helping nobody get saved. That's discouraging. That ain't discouraging. That's a reality check. Get your mind right. That's a reality check. That's what's wrong with niggas. Nobody don't want no reality check. You niggas live in a fantasy world 24-7. This is like your life, a, a continuous music video. Like you live in a movie. You have stupid niggas talking about my life is a movie. If your life is a movie, you in fantasy world, nigga. But no, but you know there's niggas who make songs or walk around my life like a movie. So you mean to tell me you live in fantasy land all day, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah, and you know what a nigga like that there? Nigga need to take the Take the Glock, right? Don't actually hit him in the face with the side of it, but flip it up to the butt and hit that nigga right square in his nose or right in the front of his mouth with the butt of the gun. Bah! Wake up, nigga. I want to make sure I knock all your teeth out your mouth. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to fire it off by his ear. I want to get a 357 Magnum and take the butt of it and hit him right in his mouth. Wah! You know what I'm saying? Cause that, see that bullet by his ear ain't gonna give him no reality check. That force of that butt of that 357 upside his mouth gonna wake him up. Then after that, take my good hand and then my goon hand and slap it. So your good hand is dirty from the goon hand? You know what I'm saying? Hey, some days my good hand might be my right hand. My goon hand always my left hand. That's the power here. <laughs> Cause when I slap you with that one there, it's gonna be with some meaning. I got that from a dude on uh, American Pimp. That nigga said I had to lay my goon hand down. That nigga, that was a fool. That nigga said I'm hungry like the werewolf of London. He said I had one of these hoes. She said I hoe asked me could I get mother. That nigga said she asked me could I get Mother's Day off. He said I looked at it and said for what? <laughs> I said well that nigga that was hard. That nigga said I'm hungry. He said I be out here looking for hoes, hungry like the werewolf of London. I said well this nigga here is a fool. That's the only reason why a nigga used to look at them. That's the only reason why a nigga used to look at them documentaries. Them niggas funny. When them niggas get to rolling and they go to talking, them niggas funny. He said that whole city. He said, and she's standing there looking around here looking more fool than a white face mule. I said, boy, this nigga here is a clown. So y'all can't go look at it now because they do a lot of cussing. Plus, some of y'all don't even need to see that. See, you see some of them women in them little bit of drawers. You nigga gonna go back there and you gonna have that shame look looking at that lotion. I'm better than this. 
<laughs> I'm better than this. <laughs> Y'all know I ain't lying. I just said a change look. <laughs> look at that look. I'm telling you, you just sitting there looking at the lotion, shaking your head. We better than this. <laughs> it don't matter. I'm going back for round two. Nasty nigga. Roman chapter three, verse one. Nasty nigga. Set on his off hand. Off hand. <laughs> so it would be like a stranger. Like it's a stranger. <laughs> That ain't nobody else. Niggas say you right handed. You trying to use your left hand like that's a different person. That wasn't no different person. That's still you, Nick. <laughs> I forgot what we heard that. We heard a dude. We heard somebody say that. Who that was said that? Oh no, it was on some type of show. Yeah, it was on some TV show. That nigga say you ever masturbated and used your other hand like it was a stranger. I think it was a uh, how much mother. Yeah, yeah, that's so all it was. I said, well, that nigga, that's nasty. You, you, you know you got to be something mentally wrong with you. You doing that? Nigga say you use your off hand to make it think it's a stranger. Woo -woo. But guess what though? All jokes aside, it's Hebrew congregations don't think it's nothing wrong with you playing with yourself. Don't think it's nothing wrong with you smoking cigarettes. Don't think it's nothing wrong with you cussing. Don't think it's nothing wrong with you drinking. Don't think it's nothing wrong with you not being challenged to turn your life away from sin and live clean and live upright. Don't think nothing wrong with that. They say you always gonna sin, brother. Ain't nobody can be perfect. And y'all sit back and y'all run to go tell people you can't be perfect, but yet you are the worst example ever of the proclamation that you're making. If you know you're not going to live clean and upright, why tell other people they can do it? Why sit and hear the word when you know you're going to get up and go do what you want to do anyway? Why do that? Why waste your time? If you know you're going to do what you want to do anyway, you might as well, hey, you might well hit the club tonight. Shoot, I know it's a club somewhere popping somewhere in America. I'm talking about, and, and I guarantee you, in some black club, no matter what the age group is, somebody messed around and played this one particular song from back in the 80s. You know what song that is? Who know what song I'm thinking about? I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell. There's a lot that they use. Somewhere in some black club in America, somebody is going to play tonight. Just got paid. Oh, right. <laughs> <I'm in. laughs> oh they're jumping. <laughs> hey, first song came my mind that was a loop. Don't stop! <laughs> yeah, somebody gonna play that somewhere. And somebody gonna walk. It, it could be a younger club. It could be, you know what I'm saying? A little up there could be an older club. But some black club in America, somebody gonna bang that when they're when they coming in there. Just got paid. It's Friday night, party jumping. Oh, they go like this here, they gonna be in there like, and they gonna be in there, move. <laughs> nigga say like this here. I did just get paid. Straight up, I did, I just got my check, nigga, fresh fit, where the drinks at, where the hoes at. You gonna have one old nigga think he's still 22 years old, and all them young girl faces. Hey, that yeah, that's how that bus ride was able to sit, hit that girl on the same day with an old rotten vagina. See, you let a nigga hit you on the same day and then find out he got that thing. Now you got it. <sighs> she should have called it, stank it hope. Hey, you should. Hey, I'm going to tell you something real, man. And I know some of y'all probably done did it. Look at that nigga went back then, Ninja Guy and old Gaiden. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to tell you something real, though. And I know pretty everybody probably done done it and maybe once in their lifetime. Well, don't you know if you went and laid with somebody on the same day you met him, you should have called something. And don't sit back and, and some of y'all said, y'all didn't even sit back thinking about getting no raincoat. He ain't want no cover, nigga. Bell back bandit. That's what you went and did. <laughs> <laughs> Bell back bandit. <laughs> On for real. You know, y'all know y'all had y'all y'all women know y'all done let a couple of them bell back bandits come right on around there, cause you were lusting just as hard as he was. He like I ain't got no rubber. You told him I don't care. Come on on him. He say take one for the team, nigga. Just go ahead and bring it. Bell bike band, next thing you know, you, you ain't even sit back and think it. When your vagina went to itch and he done left something behind with you. You say, baby, I'm just hot. Nigga done left you crabs. You know what I'm saying? He dropped something all right. Nigga dropped you something you can't get rid of. You know what I'm saying? You know? That's why you better thank the Lord for the word. Now keep your leg closed, you won't catch it nothing. Because I know ain't that one of you niggas a virgin. You sit here and try to tell me a virgin. I just met me alive. Because I know ain't that one of you niggas ain't no virgin. Won't fool me with that. Tell, tell that lie to somebody else, cause I'ma tell you straight to your face. I don't believe you. I don't appreciate you lying to me to my face. I am. Mm-hmm. 
the probably only place you dig a version that is in your booty hole. <laughs> Niggas say y'all had a coverage called Bear Back Cover One. I'm telling you, some of y'all ain't virgins there. Some of y'all done had somebody break that freshness seal. I ain't talking about no men either. <laughs> some of y'all women freaks, y'all know y'all freaking. Roman 3 and 1. Yo. I'll name her. Yo. She, she, she was reading that book. Yeah, whatever. That's what she said. She said she was reading, uh, what it called it? Fifty Shades of Grey. Now she want to get into some bondage. I say, boy, you better go somewhere with that devil. but tie somebody else up. She ain't the only one. Cause it was somebody else. We don't leave. We'll call that name. Somebody else asked about some bondage, too. <laughs> want to put little French maid suits on, do all that crazy stuff. Talking about some handcuffs. I never understood how a nigga handcuffed somebody. I ain't handcuffing. Ain't nobody handcuffing me. Nigga, who, nigga? Shit. Stop. Yeah, that motherfucker hurt. I need to move. Ain't anybody no hurt to move, man. Every time I had handcuffs on, I was going to jail. I don't want to do no handcuffs. Well, you going to jail? Do you know something about handcuffs? Nigga, I've been shackled like a, a wild animal, man. Man, that ain't what happened. Well, y'all don't know what it's like to have your arm like this here tight. The sun, man, you walking hunched over, man. That stuff, man. They ain't with none of that stuff, man. I'm straight on that. All the niggas think I'm a star. All of them niggas mind is, we want free. We want free. <laughs> That's all I'm mind. They do all kind of jail downtown. So they got a little window. So them niggas be looking out the window just gazing and trying to see anything. Now all you hear, we want free. You didn't hear a nigga beating on the window somebody. I done seen people come see the nigga be beating on the window then the girl be flipping their little shirts up show their little titties be twerking downstairs. Now I'm like this here. Well, let me get out that window. Boy, when the Super Bowl was here, I thought a couple of niggas were going to jump off the top rail. They couldn't take it. I was locked up when the Super Bowl was here. I ain't seen none of it. What? Sure. Hey, I had me a blast, nigga. Went out there that all. Uh... Man, I ain't care nothing about none of that. All I hear a nigga talking about Puffy having a $300 party. I say them white folks having a 30 year party over there across the street. That's what you need to be worried about. Because you ain't going to see Puffy, homie. But them white folks trying to give you 30 years, though. Yeah, I got locked up a month before, man. That's tragic. I didn't care. Oh, like, what you care. No, I ain't care nothing about the Super Bowl. You don't think I care about? Oh, you care. I can't get no money in here, man. You I ain't think. Because Thomas was here. That's I ain't care nothing know. about Thomas Pete Brady being here. Cause boy, I was trying to buy this here. I want to get me some money, man. I say, shoot, every day I'm in here, I can't make no money. Nigga, I wasn't going to that game, nigga. He tried to get his autograph. Autograph for what? Them people want too much money for them Super Bowl tickets. I just seen they release general tickets to the public for the Pacquiao Mayweather fight, and it's fifteen hundred, seven, five hundred dollars. Like I ain't even going to watch the fight, cause and it really started hitting me uh, when I started dealing with the word. You sitting watching two human beings pound on one another. I ain't telling you that it's a sin to watch it, but I have no desire to watch two human beings beat on each other. I, it even started turning me for a little while when I first got out of the work watching foot. It, it wasn't the same. When I went to deal, all I went to looking back is, look, oh my, I see a hit and I only think I, I just cringe sometimes. My God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, for real. It, it don't be the same, man. Yeah. When that word come in, it's not the same. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Niggas sit and watch it, but I don't, you, nigga ain't locked in like they used to be, man. Nigga, NBA playoffs come on, man. I be looking at other stuff. Nigga, hit a game. I did catch Steph Curry last night, though. Dad, <laughs> Cold blooded, but you know what I'm saying. But sit back and think about it. Niggas finna pay a hundred dollars to watch two men beat on each other. I'm not watching that. Now they had to shoot. That's what a couple boxers said till they wheeled him up out of there. That time Pacquiao got knocked out. Nigga thought Pacquiao was dead. Nigga Roy Jones got knocked out like that too. Nigga on his face. Snowing. <laughs> no, I'm just saying to sit back and look at it though. When you sit back and look at it as a Jew, when you sit back and look at that, that ain't something that necessarily we should get a lot of excitement from that. I don't know what it is, your baby. Your baby gonna be a skydiver. You see that, right? That's all she wanna do. She love that fallback. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I'm, every time I do it, she don't even wait till the fallback. She already falling back before you even get the dip. Roman 3 and 1. She was doing it on the slide. <laughs> my, my, my niece crazy, y'all. She got drink all the time. Like, 
Uh, uh, holding her, was in the room while holding her. No. And I took a little shot. Yeah. See, Lizzie like to fall back. Lizzie like to fall back like she's jumping up out of something. You can hold her, and she don't wait for the actual dip down like you're going to drop her. She already falling back. She enjoys that for some reason. Strange baby. Romans 3 and 1. What advantage have, have then the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? Much chiefly, much every way chiefly, because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? Shall the unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it is written, thou might be justified in thy sayings and might overcome when thou art judged. How else you going to overcome when you judge unless you were keeping the word? Because that's how Yahshua overcame, didn't he? He said, be of good cheer. I overcame the world. That means he overcame the flesh and he overcame sin by being disciplined to the obedience of the word. He didn't see a way that was right before his eyes, which led to death. So the only way you're going to be justified in what you say and overcome when you judge is that you're going to have to obey the book. Come on back to Re Revelation chapter 20. Lord will, we're going to get to Ezekiel 20 tonight. We've been holding it in the clip and we're going to get to it tonight. Lord will. It's early. So Revelation 20 and 12 again. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So what would get your name blotted out the book then? And where we can read that at, that you could, where, where it say sin to get your name blotted out the book? No, I say where can you read what will get, what that sin will get your name blotted out the book? No, not this. Hey. I think of Revelation and Proverbs. It said Exodus the 32nd chapter. Exodus. He told Moses, Moses said, Block me out the book which you have written. Yeah. He said, He that sinned against me, I will blot him out my book. Yeah. So, like I said, man, the, the two people that died yesterday, the dude that got murked and, uh, and the with McDonald's and the dudes that got killed by the police and the brother that that Mouse and Tino that died recently, the uh the Israelite that died on the Sabbath when he was killed by the police, these men died and they committed sin. Their names ain't in the book. They're done. They're done. There's no way around that. They're finished. You know what I'm saying? When they, the next thing, you got to sit back and look at it. Because we were talking about this earlier. When you die, it's like the lights are cut off. You know what I'm saying? It's no different than when you lay down and go to sleep. The only difference is, is it might not be as peaceful. You know what I'm saying? Some people don't go to sleep peacefully. Like those people that got, like that young girl that got shot in the face. Dude called her over to the car and they shot her in the face. She didn't go to sleep peacefully. You know what I'm saying? She did but when she wakes up, the last thing she's going to remember is being shot in the face. And then the next time she wake up, she's going to be standing before that throne and them books opened. And she's done. So y'all don't understand that. When, when you go to sleep, the next time you wake up, it's going to be before that throne. Unless you had that man's spirit in you. You know what I'm talking about? Then you're going to meet him when he get back. I want y'all to look at Ecclesiastes chapter 9. We're going to get to Ezekiel 20. We got something. Ecclesiastes 9. Ecclesiastes 9. Now, three of them got shot last night. Two women died. The dude survived. Ecclesiastes 9 and 1. They were probably, I think they were going after the bulldagger. What it looked like they were going after the bulldagger. 
I thought they would be going after the dude because you hear two women and you think, why would somebody want to shoot two women? But it looked like they were going after the bull dagger. That that was the intended target. And then they just did a Griselda Blanco. I know y'all don't know who Griselda Blanco is. But, tr but, truth, but truth be told, the Lord operate the same way. We can read that too. Yeah. Kill them all. Yeah. Griselda Blanco is called the Godmother. One of the biggest cocaine traffickers in America. In Miami at the time. And if, and if she wanted to put a hit on somebody, she say kill everybody there. But guess what? The Lord operate that way too. See, y'all, those of y'all that like to hang with sinners and be joined with sinners, see, when they judgment come and you with them, guess what happened? Kill him too. You going down with them. We'll read it too. Mm-hmm. He said, for this I considered in my heart, even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God. No man know either love or hatred by all that is before them. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked, to the good and to the clean and to the unclean. To him that sacrifice, to him that sacrifice not. As is the good, so is the sinner, and he that swear, as he that fear no. There is an evil among all things that are done under the sun. There is one event unto all. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil. And madness is in the heart while they live. And after that, they go to the dead. For, for to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Don't y'all be sitting around here talking about your grandma looking down on you. Your grandma in that box. Your grandma wherever they put, put her at. Wherever your homeboy at. Because you know niggas quick to scream. I know he looking down on us watching us. Set your stupid butt up with that Roman, Roman pagan mythology. This book ain't never taught you no dead people sitting up looking on you. Nigga, that's necromancy. Deuteronomy chapter 18 so you can see it in the law. That's necromancy. We're Jews. Don't mess with no crazy junk like that. Talking about I know you. I told you my homegirl told me when my auntie died, go up there and talk to her. It was the dumbest thing I ever... Ah, you know I wasn't raised in no church. That just seemed like so stupid to me and I know she was trying to help. I'm going to sit here and talk to a headstone. Deuteronomy 18 and 10. I'm going to talk to a headstone. Sean Dre ain't talking back. I already told y'all that one before she even went to talking. I'm going to run it. Because you ain't supposed to be saying nothing back. You six feet on the ground. How is you talking to me? Yeah, it didn't make sense to me. I go out there and like, look. Yeah. Man, I went out there when I never went by. That was the first time I ever did it. My grandma been buried in West Lawn Cemetery over there on the north side for years. I ain't been out there since the day we put out there. Yeah, that's the only time I go out there. If somebody died, we go out there, then we go look at all relatives. And look here. That'd be the last time I see another nigga die. And like here, but now I ain't going out there at all. Call me, ask me to go to no cemetery. Ain't nothing but uncleanliness out here. You go, nigga. Unclean niggas go where unclean stuff at. I ain't going out there. You know that that dirty nigga. Look here, dirty niggas like dirty hoes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Dirty niggas like dirty clothes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all know that. Y'all always know them old nasty, funky nut niggas always got old stink. I'm talking about old dirty hoe. I'm talking about she got them. I seen a picture. I put it on Instagram the other day. Say you can't trust no hoe with flip flops like this here. Old bottom just black. That's a foot drag. Old dirty foot hoe. Man, what I'm doing with this dirt? You know what vagina stink. Look at her slides. Nigga say she been done took her shoot out them flip flops. You like, oh my God. All you looking at, your eyes just stuck. Looking at them slide. And now all you sitting back thinking to yourself is, how am I get out of here? Nigga say, you ain't even got no phone. Nigga say, you ain't even got no cell phone on. You be like, hey, I got to go. Somebody just called me. You ain't got no phone. I heard it to the house. I'll be about you. <laughs> nigga say, no, man, I think my car running hot. I need to go get some radiator fluid. <laughs> like, I'm telling you, man. I be like, oh, man, I got to see my P.O. Oh, boy, I got to go see my homeboy in the county. Nigga say, you coming up with something? He'll visit in day until tomorrow. I can come see him today. I got a special visit. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, though, man. Boy, I'm telling you, man. Nigga can't stand no dirty woman. Boy, that's bad, that's bad for business. That's bad for business. 18 and 10. 18 and 9. 
when thou art come into the land which Yah thy God give thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you one that maketh son or daughter to pass through the fire or use divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch. Y'all know what observing times is. What's observing times? Trying to tell the future. Tarot cards. You know what I'm talking about? All that stuff talking about I'm a Capricorn. Flush it down the toilet. It's a nigga I know who's been in the world 25 years to my own deal with astrology. But the stuff they say about the personality traits to a particular sign, that stuff be true. I say, boy, you smoking crack. I studied that stuff in prison. It's a bunch of baloney. See, what ends up happening is niggas see a couple things about it that be close to their character. And they be like this here. See, see, see. I seen a lot of stuff about cancers. I'm like, I don't do none of that stuff. You had, how many of y'all actually had somebody walk up to you? Are you an Aries? I could tell because you did this here. I wish a nigga would walk up to me and ask me something like this. Here. Am I a what? They said, let me ask you this. Are you a stupid? You ever had that happen to you? I mean, I've, I've heard it. I've seen people do it. Uh, actually, I've seen people do it. And I've heard people discuss that they walked up to people and do it. I haven't had anyone come do it to me. I've had people ask me what my sign was before the word. I haven't had anybody do it after. I seen somebody in the word post all the signs. Talking about you you like these signs. Niggas do it all the time. How many of y'all was real big into that? that how many of y'all went and actually read a horoscope? I ain't talking about just reading it occasionally. I'm talking about faithfully. Well, I think I know what my son is now. <laughs> like, I ain't never know. Mm-hmm. This nigga say, hugs came every day. Yeah. Where was a horoscope? A horoscope is when you have some nigga sitting somewhere who writes some stuff up that's according to these people's signs, and Chelsea and Britta just said they just read it religiously, and they probably thought they whole and they probably thought they whole life was around this here. Say I read the daily, the yearly, the monthly, whatever they had, wrapped up all in it. See my horoscope say I'm gonna meet the man of my dreams today, and you still lonely taking a cold shower. <laughs> mm-hmm. Cause that's all that is that you're trying to guess. Hold on, look what else he say. You know, and you know what an enchanter is, and you know what a witch is. Verse 11. Or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits. So all them people that be talking about, they pulling up dead people. I'm finna pull up your Uncle Jimmy from the dead. So you can talk there. You know, people spend money to go do that. What was that man named that had the TV show, man, they were doing that there? Y'all know what I'm talking about? It was, it was a white dude, man. His name escapes me right now. Yeah, Michael Edwards. Nigga go see Michael Edwards talking about let me talk to my dead daddy. He had a TV show. Montel Williams used to bring Sylvia Brown on his show with that crap all the time. Never watched huh? Never watched Montel. I mean it's before your time. Yeah, indeed. I know who he is. But just like I ain't never watched Ricky Lake. Who? Ricky Lake. Watch who? Ricky Lake. Oh, Ricky Lake? Oh, I hated Ricky Lake. I hate it. Matter of fact, me and my homegirl, because she knew that we hated Ricky Lake so much, that she knew that I despised Ricky Lake so much, she wanted to come up with a plan that where we could fake like we was having a relationship problem and she was pregnant and I was denying the baby so we could go on Ricky Lake to actually go off on her and embarrass her on her own stage and get a free trip to New York out of it. We were seriously considering it. Because she... Cause she was like, cause she, <laughs> somebody we went to school with actually went on Ricky Lake. Somebody I know actually went on Ricky Lake. I was you did that. God never let you live it down. It wasn't nothing to be able to live down because we were going straight. See, Ricky Lake was already, you know she a fake Jew, for one. You know she Jewish. You might look at her and can't tell that, but she Jewish. You know what I'm saying? Why you think she got, why does this fat slut have a television show? Who is she? 
What has she done other than be fat and lose some weight? What has Oprah done? No, but Oprah was a newscaster. Uh. You know what I'm saying? Like Oprah had a background in doing these type of things and somebody just rolled the dice. Same thing with Maury. No, I mean Maury was on the news though. But see, when, when Maury used to be on the CBS Evening News, Matter of fact, when Maury started that show, it was actually a serious talk show. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how long he, he wasn't always doing that. I'm not the baby that you're not the baby. He wasn't always doing that. It growed into that when he seen that's what people wanted to see and he could get paid off of it. Because he used to actually do serious shows. Jerry Springer was the same way. He used to actually do serious shows. He was actually the mayor of Cincinnati. <laughs> Before he did that show, he was actually the mayor. And guess what? He he Jewish too. Yeah. Maury Povich is Jewish too. He's married to Connie Chong. She used to be the CBS anchor on the Eden News, one of the first women on on network news. Oh, so that's uh, what's the name? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ray said he used to watch more. More used to be serious, and then one one day. I guess he did a, uh, a DNA show, and man, it was only popping from there. Niggas only really watch more for one reason, to laugh at the hoes that he turn around and say, you are not the father. Well, nigga don't want to see the show for nothing else because it'd be funny because them hoes fall out of the floor with their booty in there. And the first thing I want to tell him is, that's how you got in this position in the first place. <laughs> Face down with your booty in there. That's just how you got in your problem. Keep your booty out there, you won't have any problem. But it, but it, but you got to sit back and look at something. His show could only get in that direction because of the degradation of society. If society wasn't doing this and didn't want to see it, then he wouldn't have a market for it. Mm -hmm. If people actually wanted to look at serious, guess what? If he did that serious stuff and then people cut his show off because now you got all this tomfoolery on him, he would have been up. Man, Maury been on the air almost thirty, uh, almost not thirty, almost twenty five years. Maury been on the air since the late 80s, maybe early 90s. He done beat Geraldo out. He done beat Sally Jesse Raphael out. He done beat Ricky Lake, Donahue. All these people was rolling. Man, that's all they used to have on TV back in the day with talk shows. I'm talking about they were all serious. I'm talking about what's that white lady name? Uh, What's that white lady name? Man, I don't care, man. Ricky Lake and Stu and Hot Poop fall. I can't tell. So I don't mess with Ricky Lake. Um, I'm talking about what's the what's the white lady name that they ended up the dude ended up killing killing the dude when they came out there talking about he had a gay crush. Her name was Jenny Sutton. Jenny Jones. Gone. Her show went off the air because she brought a dude on there talking about he had a crush on another man and dude was all he was like this here. They went back home, but he killed him. He killed that man. And her show went got killed not too long after that. Like, it was a lot of talk shows on, man. I'm talking about, man, Queen Latifah done had two talk shows get canceled. More is still going. You know what I'm saying? She got a third, too. Man. Yeah, she rolling then. You know what I'm saying? It's only one person might be able to roll right now. That's Steve Harvey because he got some serious stuff. Give him a little bit. He'll get canceled, too. Because all he doing is catering to stupid hoes who want simps and you dumb hoes love him. What? Bunch of lonely, bunch of lonely women can't humble themselves to God's word, looking for a man. All these niggas got some money in they simps. Man, you seen that nigga uh, said, uh, what you call it? Man in the household is just a uh, a title. It really don't mean nothing. Woo! Niggas say this nigga said the man of the household just a title it don't mean nothing. But Steve Harvey's a buster. How you gonna take relationship advice from a nigga been married four times? Yeah. You say, man, that's just a title. See, we just say that just to say. I'm like, man, no, nigga, you say it just to say it. I, I'm going to tell you right this here. Mind. I'm going to be the man of my house. Because if Nicole don't like it, she can leave. You know what I'm talking about? Because, boy, last, thing I, last time I checked, boy, I don't wear panties. I wear boxers. Last time I checked, I don't wear skirts. I put on pants. Mm -hmm. Last time I checked, I stand up to urinate. I do not sit down. Straight up. You know what I'm talking I about? I forgot what. I think I seen it on uh, 
Facebook or something, I'll tag you in or yeah. post it and then tag you something like yeah, that. Yeah, man, I don't play them type of game, boy. That's why I tell each and every one of y'all men, you stand up, stand up and be a man don't mean you got to be rude, disrespectful, and oppressive. But, boy, you got to stand up and be a man, boy. I don't be with none of that nonsense. I just did it to one of the sisters today. I do it in the cold all the time. That voice tone get up to a point where I don't particularly care for. The conversation won't proceed because I will tell you to lower that tone. It won't proceed. I wouldn't care what you were saying. Everything you could have said could have been a million percent right. It's not going to change the fact this conversation will not continue. I won't allow it. And that's real. If I allow it, boy, I had my mom. And I don't have a vagina. Nor ovaries, nor eggs. I don't play them type of game, boy. I'm a man through and through. All the way live, boy. I don't play them type of games. Never have either. Try me if you want to. I'm trying to tell you now. Y'all don't be knowing, right? Y'all better be lucky for one thing that I'm not the Lord. <laughs> me on saying me and my sister Nell used to talk about this all the time because she used to say it a lot. She said niggas better be glad I'm not God. Because I got a little bit more mercy and patience than she did. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you, got a lot more than me, you know what I'm talking about? Cause a lot of you nigga boy, you'll be dead. Yeah. You'll be dead. Well, like you got a little tip drop out going on. Though. Yeah, he well, he well, trying to do well, something. Well, 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 keep that to yourself. <laughs> keep that to yourself. Yeah, he trying to roll him up. <laughs> Hey, roll them up because I'm warm. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, they're poking out the bottom. You know what I'm saying? But that, but that real though. Yeah, that's not real yeah. though. I don't play. I don't play them type of game because I told y'all before, right? It's some stuff for me. Cross me, I'm good. I wouldn't care what you did, man. Back flipping the fire. Back flip. I'm talking about nigga. You could be dead on fire, man. I could have six buckets of ice cold water. I'm gonna watch you burn. You know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? I got some patience now, and I got a lot of mercy, maybe more than the average man. But boy, better be glad I ain't the Lord, though. You know what I'm saying? I've been gonna kill some of you niggas. Straight up now, I'm like, shoot, go ahead and kill it. We done told him too many times. You know what I'm saying? Done told him too many times. Too many times. You can call it ruthless all you wanna. See, I'm gonna tell you something about being ruthless. Being ruthless is scamming. Like you ain't got no care or nothing. You know what I'm talking about? But the, see, we don't really sit back and look at how actually how merciful God is. That's why he God and I'm a man. You know what I'm talking about? Because the stuff we be doing, nigga supposed to be dead. You know what I'm talking about? That's what y'all don't realize. See, I told a brother this a couple years back. See, y'all think God owe you forgiveness. You think he owe you mercy. So that's why you conduct yourself like that. See, men don't operate. That's why people say, God forgive, I don't. You ever heard people say that? Because yeah. people sit back and look at it, I don't got the mercy he got. You know what I'm saying? Boy, God got it, got spit in his face, poked in his side, hung from a tree, slapped in the face, hit with a reed, say, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they do. Ain't nothing one of y'all going to get up there and say that. And if you sit there and say you're going to say that, you a bold-faced liar. Father, kill him. Ain't none of y'all going to say that. Kill him. That's why he God and we man. Straight up, you know what I'm talking about? Man, y'all can sit back and look at it, man. I'm just here telling you. Nigga ain't finished. Some of the stuff these people be out here doing. If I were the Lord, man, kill that nigga. I send an angel right on down. Go ahead and kill him. That's why I say thank the Lord. Y'all don't sit back and look at how merciful and majestic and high and great savior that you got. Because this man sit back and say, you ought to be dead, but I spare you. Ever faith. You know what I'm saying? The man say, I ever lived to make intercession on their behalf. Say, I've made him hide in the heavens. So that you might have life. Because, nigga, I know, but I sit back and look on my, nigga should have been dead a long time ago. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all don't look at it like that. That's why you would think that's being rude. That ain't being rude. That's just being real. It better serve the Lord. That's why the Lord is the Lord. That's why he God. You better be glad I ain't. Niggas would be dead. Not just because I want to kill a nigga because I want to kill him. I'm sick of this nigga. Kill him. Wait, I'm telling you. That's what y'all missed on what I'm talking about. Every person I just mentioned who got killed, why you think the Lord let him die? I'm sick of it. Kill him. Kill him. We're going to read that too. We still going to get to Ezekiel 20. We're going to read all that too. We good. Let's roll. 
I ain't gonna do too much more talk. I'm gonna let God talk to you. Verse 11. Or a charm or a consultant with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. For all that do these things are abomination unto Yah. And because of these abominations, Yah thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with Yah thy God. For these nations which thou shalt possess, hearken unto observer of times and unto diviners. But as for thee, Yah thy God have not suffered thee so to do. So guess what? That's what these other people do. You don't be sitting right here talking about your grandma waiting on you. Look at John chapter 11 and see what Martha said. We come back to Ecclesiastes chapter 11. I'm going to still hit this Ezekiel 20. We're going to roll now. I'm sitting there telling you now. When somebody get up out of here, boy, 99.9% of the time, Lord said, that nigga got to die. Somebody got to go. He says, somebody got to die. It's time to let the gunshots blow. You know what I'm saying? Biggie made a song about it now. He was trying to tell you, somebody got to die. Because somebody done committed sin. That man says, though a sinner do evil a hundred times, it's not going to be good for them. The man just told you, because you, because a sentence against an evil work ain't executed speedily. That was talking about his mercy right there. Because I could kill you for this right now. But since I don't kill you for this right now, you think you can keep on doing it. Yeah. Ooh, John chapter 11, verse 21. Make it 20. Make it 18. Or 19. 18. Or 17. Then when Yahshua came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem about 15 furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and to Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Yahshua was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house, and then Martha said unto Yahshua, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Do y'all remember what that means? I know whatsoever you'll ask of God, God will give it to you. Anybody remember who that go to? We just looked at it. Who showed you a similitude of, I know whatever you ask of God, he's going to give it to you? Solomon's mama, that was Bathsheba. Listen what the Lord told her. Yahshua said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again. In the resurrection at the last day. She didn't sit there and say, I know he looking down on me. She said, I know he gonna get up. I know he gonna get up. But get what? All the people that, that y'all know that done died. Hey man, ain't nothing wrong with mourning for your people when they die now. You know what I'm talking about? Ain't nobody telling you not to do that. I ain't going to sit here and tell you, man, your homeboy get killed or your, your cousin get killed or your mama die, whatever the case may be, and you ain't going to be sad about it. I mean, come on, man. Be realistic. You know what I'm talking about? But then when, once that sadness set in, you got to sit back and look at you. They going to hell. Lord's will be done. Because ain't no getting around that. Ain't no getting around that. Please ask the child tonight. Ain't no getting around that. Hey, quick question. Go ahead. He had to raise Lazarus because uh, Elijah he, rose up that little boy. Well, he had to rose up other people besides that, but he was showing you what he was going to do when he get back here. Because he, he called Lazarus out with a great shout. Said, Lazarus, come forth! Because he was sitting back to show you what he was going to do when he came back. You know, a couple of the other people whom he raised, you know what I'm saying, who died, he was doing that because Elisha raised a little boy from the dead. So he. So basically, you say Elisha rose from the dead because the Lord had to do that for Elijah. No, I mean, meaning he rose people from the dead because Elijah and Elisha did. So he had to come through and do the same thing. The difference is, if my memory serves me correctly, the main pe everyone that he rose from the dead was a little girl. And if you sit back and you look at that, that's Israel raising her from the dead because she was dead. Gave her life. You know what I'm saying? That's what he came to do. Because every time, like one little girl, he said, man, she said, the maid's sleeping. And they laughed at him. You know what I'm talking about? And mocked him. You know what I'm talking about? He said back and, and you look at it. Because he got to come raise somebody from the dead because the prophets did. Mm -hmm. We're going to read Ezekiel 37 too about that breath. We might not even get to Ezekiel 20 tonight. It might have to be for tomorrow. It don't look like we're going to make it. Yeah, it don't look like we ain't going to make it. Because Ezekiel 20 by itself is a lot of information just by itself. You know what I'm saying? 
It was my intent to do so. But guess what? It'll still tie into what we're looking at tonight. Verse 5, though. We were, actually, we finished Ecclesiastes 9. But now you sit back and look at it. If they dead and they don't have no memory, they don't have any life in them. Let's go back to James chapter 2. I still want to show you if you be joined with sinners, you're going to get murk with them. Matter of fact, let's look at that now. First Peter. Chapter 4. Verse 17. He said, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, which shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? What you think going to happen to them people that don't obey the word? What you think going to happen? You think God going to save them because you loved them? No, he's not going to save them because you love them. This man is a God of judgment. And his judgment is just. And there's no iniquity with him. So guess what me, What does that mean? That means everything going to be judged according to what's written. Not according to how you feel. Not according to your human emotions and your carnal mind. Verse 18. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Because he's faithful to that promise and he won't waver. See, y'all don't sit back and look at it. The man is going to come see you. The man is going to come see you. He's going to come see you. The, problem, the difference is, will it be in peace? Or will it be with a sword? And who going to make that decision or determination? You, you, everybody on the other end of the camera, everybody on the other end of the phone. You make the decision how this man going to find you. Because that man say, even though a sinner do evil and his days be prolonged, it's not going to be well with him. Let me show you something. Amos 3 and 7. Just like this here, unfortunately, with the young man that, that mouse them dude that died, and and uh not three and seven, but three and uh three and three, three and four. And just like with the young women last night, and anybody who died, or anything that happened, let's see what he say. Will a lion roar in the forest when he have no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he have taken nothing? Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no gin is for him? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people be not afraid? Shall there be evil in the city and y'all have not done it? God killed him. God killed him. The Lord already told you in John chapter 19, you couldn't have no power against me at all except to be given to you from heaven. That would y'all have sit back and realize, suck that one up. Lord took them people out of here. Let's go back to James chapter 2. But see, the key thing is, is you got to have breath in you. Remember how we sat back and we looked at, and we'll look at it with Elisha. And we'll, we'll, we'll look at it with Elijah. And we'll see the parallel. Without breath, you don't have life. Now we have to look at these times when we see people getting breathed into, you know, you know, uh, Brittany and Nicole, they love to listen to them brothers who, uh, production companies call what? Breathe life, ain't them? There's a reason why they call it that. You seeking for this man to actually breathe life in you, right? Which is the Ruach Kako death. So if he has not done that, what did that mean? You don't got no life in you. And if you don't have no life in you, how are you going to get up out the grave? How's that going to happen? You're not. James chapter 2. James chapter 2. We stopped at verse 19. Let's read 20. But what will thou know, O vain man? That, with, that faith without works is dead. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar? See thou 
Hey, 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 mute your phone. See thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. In order for you to become a friend of God, remember the Lord say, I call you friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Because if you believe that I am he, and then you do whatsoever I command you, then you would be committed to be, I mean, told to be righteous as our father Abraham was in Genesis 15 and therefore the promise would come upon you because he promised him a seed that he would make an everlasting covenant with we just went over that on new moon how Isaac was the similitude of the promised seed which is Yahshua HaMashiach and that everlasting covenant which is the New Testament which is shared for many for the remission of sins to allow you to receive that gift of the Ruach HaKodesh y'all remember that? This is what he say now. Ye see then, how, you see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only? Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she received the messengers and had sent them out another way? Listen to what the man tell you. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Now we know what did Yahshua say? He that believe on me as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This he spake of the spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Ruach HaKodesh was not yet given, because Yahshua was not yet glorified. So just like this man, just look at the analysis he gave you. The body without the spirit is dead. Right? And he says, so without faith, for I mean faith without works is dead also. So the only way, if you say, I believe in the Son, but yet you don't obey, then you're the same as that body that don't have the Spirit because you can't get the Ruach HaKodeko. When he's talking about Spirit, let's look at Genesis chapter 2 and see what Spirit he's talking about. Mm. Y'all all right? All right, now. Genesis 2 and 5, or 2 and 6, or 7 actually. And Yah formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. So he breathed life into him to make him a living soul while he was in the dust of the ground, right? Let's go look at Job chapter 27. Lord willing, we'll get to Ezekiel 21 of these days. I guess he's just doing it like he did when we were waiting on Ezekiel 18. He get it when he read it. Job 27 and 1. Job 27 and 1. Moreover, Job continued his parable and said, As God lived, who's taken away my judgment, and the Almighty who have vexed my soul. Listen what he said. As God live who have taken away my judgment. And the Almighty who have vexed my soul. Remember now Job speaking a parable. Remember what a parable is? What's a parable everybody? Dog saying. He says God live who have taken away my judgment. And the Almighty who have vexed my soul. All the while my breath is in me and the spirit of God is in my nostrils. My lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. God forbid that I should justify you. Till I die, I will not remove my integrity from me. My righteousness I hold fast and will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me so long as I live. Let my enemy be as the wicked. He that rise up against me as the unrighteous. For what hope, what is the hope of the hypocrite, though he have gained when God take away his soul? See, we read all that there for this. All these hypocrites that be out here, man, and a lot of these people who get killed, they ain't nothing but hypocrites. Professing that they love God, but in works they deny him. What gain, when they was getting all the little worldly stuff they could get. They just sitting there and they were showing that young lady that got killed and they show her flash the money. What gain, what hope does she have now that God done taken away her soul? 
What hope will any of you have living contrary and God take away your soul? Because you know Revelation 21 saying ain't no liars entering into the gates of the city. You know a hypocrite, a liar. What gate, what hope do you have? You don't have no hope. And you're going to be sitting here, he's discouraging me. This is troubling me. You should be troubled, sinner. Change your life. Stop being a hypocrite. We just read Wednesday. Cleanse thy heart, sinner. Purify thy mind, O double-minded, so God can approach unto you. That's right there in James chapter 4. You a hypocrite because you proud. Because you want to do what you want to do. But you want to put the facade up as if you're doing what you're supposed to do. Because you would rather impress other sinners versus impressing God. Because in actuality, serving God is not really your heart's desire. See, you don't love him with the whole heart, the whole mind, the whole soul, and the whole strength. Therefore, you can't love him. Therefore, you won't love your neighbor. Therefore, love of Love wax cold because sin abounding, and that's why niggas killing each other left and right. There's no love for God in the land. There's no love of God. Is there love of God in the land? Not a true God. No, definitely not a true God. There's a lot of them got a love for God, but which one? They ain't got the love for the most high God whose name is Yahweh. What people love is, is they love their lust. Most people want to serve God for one thing. What they think that he can give them. What they think that they can get. But don't none of y'all, we just looked at the glory of the children is their fathers. Now, I didn't hit the second part of that in real great detail. Because we're going to come back, Lord permit, and look and show you the glory of for you would be the riches that the son has to give to you through your obedience and faith in him. That's why he kept, Paul kept telling you, let a man glory, let him glory in the Lord. I won't make my glory and be void. I won't glory but nothing but the cross of Yahshua HaMashiach. See, I'm actually glory in the word. I'm a glory in the son. Therefore, when I glory in the son, I can glory in the father. And therefore, I can know that I'm working the path to get eternal life, to be perfected. See, to be perfected is a long, arduous task. It takes chastisement. It takes some affliction. You know what I'm talking about? It takes some correction. It takes stuff that y'all don't want to take because you still want to bring your junk with you into God's house. You want to come in that man's house with mud on your shoes. And this place, and I'm talking about, and the carpet is white. The walls is white. The furniture is white. The tables are white. And you got mud on everything. It's on your shirt. It's on your pants. It's on your skirt. It's on your shoes. It's on your hat. It's on your scarf. And you have the nerve to want to step on this man carpet. And this whole place is clean. And you want to get upset with him that he don't want to let you into his house to defile it. We have to start looking at that and assessing that. Y'all hear me? Let's come on and look at how he said the Almighty had taken away his judgment and vexed his soul. How did he, I already, matter of fact, we already mentioned it. I'm going to see who's sharp today. How did the Almighty take away his judgment and vex his soul? Because Job's speaking a parable to you. Huh? Not just when he came down, when he taken taking away his judgment to a certain extent. When he died, he said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. But when he said he's taken away a judgment, he said, what has he done wrong? You got to remember something. Let's look at the law. I'll show you how he take away a judgment. Exodus 23. I'll show you how he take away a judgment. Exodus 23. He said he taken away a judgment, right? Vexed his soul, right? Exodus 23 and 1. Exodus 23 and 1. Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thy hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Did they not raise a false report against the man? Did they not become an unrighteous witness against the man? Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shalt thou speak in cause to decline after many to rest judgment. Neither shall thou countenance a poor man in his cause. 
If thou meet thine enemy's ox or his ass going astray, thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. If thou see the ass of him that hate thee lying under his burden and would forbear to help him, thou shalt surely help with him. Thou shalt not rest the judgment of thy poor in his cause. Keep thee far from a false matter, and the innocent and righteous slay thou not, for I will not justify the wicked. And you sit back and look at it. When this man was killed, the law said because he was innocent and didn't do anything, that he should have been justified and saved. You've seen that happen with Daniel. So when he say you've moved my judgment from me, let's go to John chapter 19 then. Because we know they did all these things to the Lord now. Now you have to sit back and look at the time going to come where you ain't did nothing wrong and these people going to do you like that. And he said I will not justify the wicked, meaning they will not be rose from the dead. We'll look at Romans chapter 2 to back that up. Romans, John chapter 19, verse 7. Make it 6. When the chief priests, therefore, and the officers say, saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Take ye him and crucify him. I find no fault in him. He said he innocent then. The Jews answered him, we have a law, and by our law he ought to die because he made himself the son of God. So they rose a false report and they lying on him. He said, when Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid. And he went into the, again into the judgment hall and saith unto Yahshua, whence art thou? But Yahshua gave him no answer. Then Pilate saith unto him, speak thou not unto me. Know thou not that I have power to crucify thee and have power to release thee? Yahshua answered, Thou could have no power at all against me except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee have the greater sin. His judgment has been removed. If you look at it on the if you look at the law and you see what happened to him, you would say he would have had to have been a sinner. Because if God was with him and he was a man of God, then why is that happening to him? The law say he will not justify the wicked. He say, don't slay the innocent over the wicked over the wicked. Because he said, I'm gonna slay the wicked and spare the innocent. You know that from Deuteronomy 19. What you thought to do to your brother, I'm gonna do it to you. But see, he did it though. Because they thought to kill him. See, he rose him from the dead, but they end up without life. See, y'all got to follow that. Come on, make sure I ain't miss everything in Job 27. See, when you look at Job 27 and 4, he say, My lips won't speak no wickedness. He say, nor my tongue utter deceit. He said, God forbid that I should justify you. When the people came to him, did he speak? Did he justify it? That's why I be telling y'all, y'all supposed to learn from the Lord when you sit back and you speak and you volunteer too much information. You ain't got to justify them people. Man, I keep my mouth closed. David told you that in Psalms 39. He said, I held my peace because thou did it. Who was he talking about who he seen did that? He was seeing the glory of his uh, 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 the Lord. Ain't that something though? That man say, while well, all my breath is in me and the spirit of God is in my nostril, I won't tell no lie, I won't speak no wickedness, and I won't justify you. I will not remove my integrity. Second Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2. So I ain't going to tell no lies. I ain't going to remove my integrity. You ain't going to be able to get me with the flim flam, buddy. He told you, man, he said, a wise man hold his peace, but the fool utter his whole mind. Sometimes you got to learn to keep stuff to yourself. Because a lot of times people are not sitting back. Why do you think he tell you don't cast your pearls before swine before they rend them underfoot? Because people sitting back looking to take the stuff that you're telling them and to use it against you. You got to know who you're talking to. You're talking to some unclean people. Keep that stuff to yourself. Niggas be having agendas. Niggas really don't be wanting to hear what you got to say. Niggas don't even really care. They looking for an opportunity to accuse. 1 Peter 1 and 21. 1 Peter 2 and verse 21. Pardon me. 1 Peter 2 and verse 21. For even, for even hereunto were you called, because the Messiah also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that you should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. He said, man, I'm going to hold my integrity. You ain't going to fight. He said, as long as the breath of God is in my nostrils, I ain't telling no lies. 
I ain't speaking no guile, and I'm going to hold my integrity. He say, who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again. And when he suffered, he threatened not. But committed himself to him that judged righteously. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body. On the tree. That we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness. By strife he will heal. See, when you actually die to sin, now you should live by the faith of the Son of God. Which would cause everlasting life to well up in you. Cause he said, "I'm gonna keep." Let's see if, if if he kept if he ain't tell no lies and he kept his integrity till he blew it till till he gave up the ghost. Let's see, John chapter nineteen, John nineteen and twenty eight. I thank the Lord for the word. This son, you got to sit back and consider that. Cause that man say, "God forbid that I should justify you." That every time them people came and asked him, "Son, when he did not just," they say, "If you be the son of God, come down from off the tree. If you be the son of God, if he will have you, man, I'm not justifying y'all. I'm gonna keep my integrity. I ain't justifying you niggas. That's what y'all don't be realizing. Somebody say son to you, and you got to say something back. You just don't know how to shut up and keep it moving." Nigga say, son, you just got to give a retort. That shows how simple-minded you are. Just because somebody say, son, if you know you in the right, and you know your stance is right, there's no need for you to have to justify yourself to them people. But when you say something back, it's because you know you wrong, or you really not confident in your stance as you would like to convince yourself that you are. How many of y'all would agree with that? Because if you're strong in your stance and you know it's right, you have no... Look up how many times I told you in your lifetime if you know you're doing what's right, you don't need to justify yourself to people doing it. Thumbs up will suffice. I done taught my little sister that her entire life, before the word. If you know you're right, you do not have to justify yourself to nobody. I ain't talking about know you right in your own mind, knowing that your action is going to justify you. You know who did that? You know who gave us an example of that? Jacob did with Laban. Y'all do know that, right? He said, my righteousness will prove me out. I don't got to justify myself to you. See, y'all justify yourself to people because you know your righteousness is not going to prove you out. John 19, 28. After this, Yahshua, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, say, if I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon a hyssop, and put it to a mouth. When Yahshua therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished, and he bowed his head, and he gave up the ghost. So he gave up, and he said, as long as he had that breath of nostril, breath in, his, breath in him, he said, I ain't going to give up my integrity now. I ain't going to justify myself to you. He said, God forbid, God say, no, I justify myself to you. Come over here to the book of Genesis. Let me find what I'm talking about. Genesis chapter 31. Genesis 31 and 1. He says, and he heard the words of Laban's son, saying, Jacob have taken away all that was our father's, and that which was of our father's have he gotten all this glory. See, that's what them people sat back when they were looking at the Lord. We're going to lose our place in our nation. If he get it, he's going to get all the glory. That's all. That's, that's a nigga fight. And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban. Behold, it was not towards him as it was before. And Yah said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers and to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. And Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to, le to, to the field unto his flock. And he said unto them, I see your father's countenance, that it's not towards me as before. But the God of my father hath been with me. And you know that with all my power I have served your father. And your father hath deceived me and changed my wages ten times. But God suffered him not to hurt me. If he said thus, the speckle shall be thy wages. Then all the cattle bear speckle. And if he said thus, the ring straight shall be thy hire, then bear all the cattle ring straight. Does God have taken away the cattle of your father and given them to me? And it came to pass at that time the cattle conceived, and I lift up my eyes and saw in a dream, and behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle 
were ringed, straight, speckled, and grizzled. And the angel of God spake unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob, I said, Here am I. And he said, Lift up thine eyes and see. All the rams which leap upon the cattle are ringed, straight, speckled, and grizzled. For I have seen that all that Laban do unto thee. I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointed the pillar, and where thou vowed a vow unto me. Now arise and get thee out from this land and return unto the land of thy kindred. And Rachel and Leah answered and said unto him, Is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not counted of him as strangers? For he hath sold us and have quite devoured also our money. For all the riches which God hath taken from our father that is ours and our children's, now then whatsoever God hath said unto thee, do. Now you sit back and you look at it. They say, man, we know that my daddy done did you sour the whole time. But everything that you, he had, God took it from him and gave it to you. Come on, man. Y'all pay attention to what you're doing. Grown people. Y'all got, okay, I got that. Y'all chill. I got that. That's somebody not paying attention to what they're doing. Grown people. Now y'all sit back and y'all hear that what 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 Solomon just, I mean what uh what Jacob just said. Let's read that verse one, one more time. Verse 9. Well, verse 7. Let's read it one more time. Your father have deceived me and changed my wages ten times, but God suffered him not to hurt me. If he said thus the speckle shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear speckle. And if he said, Thus the ring straight shall be thy hire, then bear all the cattle ring straight. Thus God hath taken away the cattle of your father and given them to me. So because that Laban was doing all this wicked, did Jacob argue and fight with it? God forbid that I should justify you. I will keep my integrity because in the end, God going to prove me to be righteous. In the end, he going to justify me. Y'all don't sit back and look at that. Y'all kick, scream, argue, and fight because you know you're wrong. See, if you know God going to justify you in the end, you don't have to do that. See, God, your righteousness will prove you out in the end if it be a God or not one. You ain't got to do all that. You ain't got to do all that. You don't got to do all of that. Come on back. Job 37. Well, hold on. Let's finish with the breath. Job 33 first. Then we get to, we're going to close with Job 37. I still got 40 minutes. Because he told you the body without the spirit is dead. When Yahshua gave up the ghost, was he not dead? So the body was separated from the spirit. But because he believed the father and he worked the works with the father son, of, he reversed that, didn't he? He put the spirit back. He put the breath back in it. But a different breath. But a different breath. Job 33. A breath that can never go away. 33 and 1. He said, Wherefore, Job, I pray thee, hear my speeches and hearken to all my words. Behold, now I have opened my mouth. My, my tongue hath spoken in my mouth. My words shall be of the uprightness of my heart. And my lips shall utter knowledge clearly. The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. If thou cannot answer me, set thy words in order before me, and stand up. Behold, I am according to thy wish in God's deed. I also am formed out of the clay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We just sat back and read, right, that he said he took, uh, he took Adam out the dust. He was formed out of the clay, too. Elihu, the son of Bacharel the Buzite, of the kindred of Ram, just told Job, look here, man, the Spirit of God made me, the breath of Almighty gave me life, and my words will be of the uprightness in my heart, and my knowledge shall be clear. And I was made out of the clay. What could this mean, gentlemen? What this could this mean, gentlemen? Well, let's go see. Let's go see. Let's go see. Let's go over here to Luke chapter 24, verse 1. I just want to set the stage of what's happening. Some of these verses we ain't even going to read because you should know them. We look at them all the time. Luke 
Luke 24, verse 1. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulcher and bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. They found a stone rolled away from the sepulcher. They entered in and found not the body of the Lord Yahshua. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Now, he said, I was formed out of the clay. He said, and I'm going to utter knowledge clearly, and my word's going to be at the uprightness of my heart, right? He said, the Spirit of Almighty have made me and gave me life. How was Yahshua came out the clay then? How was he formed out the clay? We're not going through all that. Y'all, I got to see, y'all should know this. Yahshua put the dust of the ground with him. He was put in the sepulcher, right? Say he came out of Jerusalem, Jerusalem the mother of us all, so that birthed him, right? So he was formed out of clay, right? Just like Adam, right? Took from the dust of the ground. So when he breathed the Ruach HaKodesh in him, that's what gave him life, right? Then we just read last week in Isaiah 42 that he breathed breath on the people. Didn't he just tell you in John 6 and 63, it's the spirit that quickened. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and life. Don't Romans chapter 8 say, if the spirit be in him that rose, Yahshua from the dead be in you, he'll quicken your mortal bodies alive with him. So that means he had to get on his son and breathe into him then, didn't he? Let's see an example. Hold on. Thank the Lord. So we see this young man formed out the clay. Didn't when he come out the clay, he sat down in front of his disciples and spoke out the uprightness of his heart and made his knowledge crystal clear? Didn't he sit down and cause them to understand the scriptures? He did exactly what the man said. You know how many Hebrews just go to Job 33 to prove that your people ain't in heaven? But I was talking about your Savior rising from the dead to give you the word so you could get that same breath. Let's go look at Elijah. We just looked at it last week. We'll look at it again in 1 Kings 17. Then we'll go look at Elisha. See what he did. There's a reason why you see these men blowing breath on these people. Because God want to blow breath in you. Without breath, you dead. Why you keep we keep noting, we keep mentioning that? Like when he flooded the earth, every thank the Lord. I'm going to wait on it. Wait on it. Y'all hear me? Y'all follow me? 1 Kings 17, one more time. Verse 17. I thank the Lord for the word, y'all. We got a Savior now. That's what I wanted to talk to yesterday. He put that in my mind about 1 o'clock this afternoon. We might not, uh, I mean tomorrow, we might not get to it because I got to deal with something. You know what I got to deal with? There's no other Savior beside me. We're going to crack that. He said, yeah, I ain't even know that. See, I ain't even know that. I ain't even seen none of that. I ain't seen none of that. I ain't seen none of that. You know what I'm saying? But he put it in my mind a little month. You know what that means? I either going to preach on it tomorrow or we're going to get to Ezekiel chapter 20. Not tomorrow anyway. You know what I'm talking about? That's all that means. It's saying, It came to pass after these things, the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick, and the sickness was sore that there was no breath in him. She said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O man of God? Or thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried up carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid upon him his own bed. And he cried unto Yah and said, O Yah, my God, why hast thou brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourned by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto Yah, O Yah, my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into, come into him again. And the child heard the voice of Elijah. And the soul of the child came in, into again and he revived. You heard what he said? He heard the voice, right? John chapter 11. John chapter 11. After John chapter 11, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, Revelation chapter 20. Well, I love that word, man. 
And I've got to still get that Romans 2. But he said, I ain't going to justify you. I ain't forgot about it. We rolling right now, though. We thank the Lord. John chapter 11, verse 34. 33 is even better. I got a little time. When Yahshua therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was struck. And he said, Where have you laid him? They say unto him, Lord, come and see. Yahshua wept. Then said the Jews, Behold, now he loved him. And some of them could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused that even this man should not have died. Yahshua therefore groaning in himself come to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Yahshua said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stink, for he had been dead for days. Yahshua said unto her, I said unto thee that if thou would believe, thou should see the glory of God. That's why a lot of y'all ain't seen the glory of God, because you have not believed. That's why you ain't seen it. Why do you think a lot of people actually don't get to hear the preaching of Yahshua HaMashiach? They had not believed. Why would God show them the glory? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Yahshua lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I know that thou hear me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Did not Elijah do the same thing? And he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with gray clothes, and his faith were bound about with a napkin. Yahshua said unto him, Loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Yahshua did believed on him. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. See, if you don't actually hear the son's voice when you get up, that can only mean one thing. Ain't no spirit in you. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13. But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Yahshua died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yahshua will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that they which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead and the Messiah shall rise first. We don't need to read Revelation 20. Y'all know Revelation 20 say that, that those that are uh, who believe in Hamashiach and died in him will be a part of the first resurrection and they will be priests and reign with him a thousand years, right? You know what I'm saying? Why is that? They have breath in them. They believe. When he called, they're going to hear him. You know when this man come back, he going to call. A lot of people not going to hear it. He said, my sheep know my voice and they follow me. So if this man come back and shout, wouldn't you get out of the grave? So if that man come back and shout and you don't get out of the grave, guess what that mean? You in trouble. 2 Kings chapter 4. Second King chapter 4, verse 29, make it 27. Now this is a woman who got a child who was childless because she showed mercy to Elisha every time she seen him. Matter of fact, let me show you what she did for Elisha. First King, Second King chapter 4, verse 1. Let me show you what she did for Elisha. Not verse 1, pardon me. Verse 8. It fell on the day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And it was, and it, so it was that as often as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is a Kodesh man of God which passed by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, and a table, and a stool, 
and a candlestick. And it shall be when he come to us that he shall turn in hither. And it fell on the day that he came to them, and he turned into the chamber and lay there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call this Shumanite. And when he had called her, she stood before him, and he said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for